Have you been thinking about building a DIY 3D printer? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to show you how. All right, so here we've got the x-axis. Um, so first off, when I built this machine, I um, this part here was actually had some bushings in it that I made on my lathe, and then this part here I bent up um, just in my vise actually and basically I just cable tied those bushings to it. So once I'd actually built the machine, I used the machine to 3D print this part here. Um, so this part here has uh, four roller bearings in it. So these are the roller bearings here. Yeah, you can see the ball bearings just inside there. So basically they just slide across here. So they were pretty cheap. They were off AliExpress. On the x-axis, we've got a stepper motor over the top there. You can see the stepper motor here. And that stepper motor has a pulley on it. And that pulley there is basically what drives the x-axis. So the x-axis is attached to the z-axis, which is this one here, which is your up and down. So each side, there is a, a screw. So this screw here, um, and that's attached to a stepper motor down the bottom here. So that stepper motor is coupled to the stepper motor on that side, and they spin um, in sync with each other. So that makes this go up and down as the computer tells it to. So you've got your, your z-axis, and your x-axis and then you come over here and you've got your y-axis so the y-axis here goes does the forward and back same thing um, stepper motor out of the old printer has a coupling on it and a belt and then the belt goes to the back there and at the back over here there's just a pulley I and mean, that's got a bearing in it and then that's basically just rolls then at the back just here this is the limit switch so this limit switch when the machine homes itself it'll come back hit that click yep that's the y-axis Set. There's a number limit switch up the top here. The machine will come across, it'll hit that, and then that's that set. When the Z axis comes down and does its homing, that uses this little sensor right here. So this is a little um, induction sensor, and basically what it does is it'll come down and it'll sense where the bead is, and then that's what gives you the offset of the, um, in, in the software I've set up an offset from the where this reads to where the tip of this is, um, and that's how the, the Z axis is set. So then after that process has been done, it'll do a homing sequence. So it'll hit nine spots on, on the bed. And then what it can do is it can calculate for any twisting or bowing in the bed. Um, so that's quite important for getting prints that are sort of more accurate. Um, and you don't have to level the bed as much. Um, then we continue on up here and you've got the drive wheel for the plastic. So this is the 1.75 mil um, plastic that I use. Um, this is just PLA in here. Normally I like to try and use PETG. Um, I find that the PETG is a bit stronger um, and it also flows a bit better and it has a bit more high temperature resistance. So basically that, that plastic gets fed down through this drive wheel and then the drive wheel sends it down through this tube all the way down into the nozzle and then the nozzle here has a, a heat break so this this here is cooled by this fan this fan cools this so that the plastic doesn't melt inside it until it gets to here so this heater here heats up this to whatever I set it in the um, in this in the slicing software so normally for the PLA I'm about 190 degrees um, maybe 200 um, depending on what I'm doing at the time so at the moment this machine's actually um, needs a bit of maintenance work this here was the thermocouple for the ah, sorry the thermistor um, so that's that's one of these little little glass things here so as you can see they're very tiny and quite quite brittle as well um, so unfortunately over time they do wear out you should always have some spare parts available um, basically this machine obviously as you can see all of this metal work here was all free so all those metal parts that you see all of this stuff was all made just by me by hand um, and welded together so as you can see here I've also printed some other parts to support these and over time I've upgraded um, and you know modeled parts here with bearings again in them um, which makes it a bit roll a bit smoother and a bit better and here you can see that I've got some um, KO wool so the KO wool is basically to insulate this so this bed here is actually a heated bed it's powered by the 12 volt you can see there 
that's where the power comes in. So the bed will heat up to about 60 odd degrees when I turn that on. So this is the back of the machine. This is a bit of a mess of wires and things. But basically what I've got going on up here is this is a 3D printed case for my Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is what controls the whole entire printer. So the Raspberry Pi here is connected to my network, Wi-Fi network basically at home through a cable. And what I can do with that is from any computer in the house, I can basically log into this and send it G-code files. So on the back here, we've got the main power plug, which just is just a normal just a normal plug that plugs into the wall and gives 240 volt power. That 240 volt power goes into just a normal computer power supply. Not sure what the specs on that are, but it's just a 12 volt power supply from a desktop computer basically. Here is a, this is a basically a transistor and behind this, quite a large one, and that's what runs the bed. So this uh, ramps board and this tangle of wiring here, that's a ramps board on a Arduino Mega. And basically what that does is it takes control signals from this and then sends them to this and then this will output through these stepper drivers to the stepper motors on the front side and those stepper motors will move the machine so what the Raspberry Pi also does is it sends the signals to this to give the PWM or pulse width modulation um, to the um, transistor in here which controls my temperature on the bed and then there's also um, I don't know if you can see it just in there there's another two transistors and those transistors in there are actually what's controlling the temperature on the bed uh, sorry which is controlling the temperature on the hot end so uh, the hot end basically needs to be kept at a, a consistent temperature the same as the bed for the the plastic to flow properly so that does the same thing it's pulsing that 12 volt supply and it's that's how it controls the the temperature of the um, the hot end right so this is the software that I use um, it's called um, OctoPrint and I run a program through OctoPrint called Clipper um, or OctoClipper so what OctoClipper does is it basically does all the calculation stuff um, on the Raspberry Pi and then it sends it out to the ramps board which is on the Arduino. Um, this just sort of helps with a bit of the speed um, and things like that. So basically I used to use Marlin. Marlin was a program that was straight on the Arduino board and then the Arduino was taking basically and trying to do all of the calculations on that little board. Um, so it struggles a little bit when you're trying to print faster and um, things like that so I found a program um, called OctoClipper and it basically takes care of all of that and um, so all it does with the ramps board is basically send the information that needs to go to that board and then that board just outputs those things to the stepper drivers and the um, the heater and all of that kind of thing um, so in here you've got quite a few controls obviously you've got your your temperature graph um, so you can change how hot things are in here just by clicking it um, so you know you can turn it off and make it 60 degrees you can heat the heat the bed up um, heat the hot end up um, so you've got a bit of control there so you can preheat things before you go and start the print one thing I did found, find with uh, the heating of the actual elements and things is that OctoClipper seems to be able to heat the bed up faster than what the uh, Marlin software could I don't know whether that's just because I've got a better um, better system and a better way of doing it than um, what the Marlin software does but it seems to heat it up three times as fast um, it's really quick so you're not waiting around you know for 15 minutes just for the bed to heat up um, so that's your your temperature section I normally have it on this when I'm printing so I can keep an eye on what the temperature of the bed and the temperature of the hot end is doing and the next one here you've got your um, XYZ controls so you click this button and it'll home the machine so you home X, X and Y first and then you home the Z and you can also use the extruder in this to test extrusion and all of that kind of thing um, make sure that your extruder is extruding the right amount of steps for what so this will you can set up for say five millimeters of extrusion and you can actually test that and make sure that your tool is actually moving the right amount of plastic out so that when you do your printing it's actually 
Correct. G code viewer. So in here you can um, you can basically pull that in, and then what that does is you can zoom in on that, and then that shows you a layer by layer of what the printer is actually going to print. So that's your layer by layer, um, and that's the green lines are all the movements that the printer is going to do. Uh, so that's a pretty cool feature. So you can sort of test print the part almost um, before you even print it. Make sure that there's no overhangs that aren't going to print or anything like that. Um, and here's the terminal so you can you know type in G29 and the machine will um, do its automatic bed leveling. Um, G28 you can do the homing of the machine. Time lapse, you can set up time lapses in here if you've got a webcam or something hooked up to the Raspberry Pi, it'll actually record that for you. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature as well. Go down to OctoClipper, this is all the basic stuff that the, the clipper does and so here's the actual um, configuration file. Um, so this is this is what you've got to do when you first set the machine up. You've got to go through all of this and set up um, your pinouts, uh, your end stop positions, your maximum travel, your minimum travel, um, the homing speeds and things that you want. This is where you set up the bed leveling program. This is where you set up all the pinouts for everything. Um, so there is a bit of bit of learning to it but once you get it set up I, f I find that it's much better than the Marlin um, standard software so this is all all the back-end stuff as well so your serial communications and things like that just the setup of the printer basically um, yeah so that's sort of the software um, down here you've got these are all the files that I've had in the machine and printed. Um, the green ones are completed prints, the red ones are ones that have failed or I've stopped halfway through because there's been a jam or something like that. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty good software. So I guess the first part of building a um, 3D printer would be finding the parts. So you can find the parts pretty cheaply. Um, I got them off of a website called Trade Me that we have here in New Zealand. Um, basically all I did was buy one of those big old printers that you'd get um, you know on the businesses and things like that um, and then me and my son stripped them down and took all the stepper motors out of them so that's a really really cheap way of getting um, basically almost free stepper motors I think I bought two of the big printers for a dollar each so you know I got about five stepper motors from each one so that was enough to build two 3d printers essentially the only real things that I had to pay for was the Arduino board to run um, the stepper drivers and things like that. The Raspberry Pi that I used to run the Arduino board essentially by using OctoPrint. Um, and then the, balls, uh, the lead screws, sorry. Most of the other parts basically were made by me for free, um, just from scrap parts. I guess if you've been thinking about building a, um, a 3D printer, um, I'd say go for it. I mean, it's a great way to learn how CNC works. Um, it's a great way to learn um, CAD because you're forced to um, design parts and then slice them. Um, so, I mean, you can download parts, but it's not quite as satisfying as when you go and actually model a part in the CAD software and then you slice that part up, you send it to your printer and then you're left with a a final part at the end. Yeah, I'd, I'd say to anyone, give it a go. Um, if someone tells you you can't do something, that's an even better reason to go and do it. Um, so I guess the reason I built my 3D printer is because I had bigger um, CNC things in mind. Um, so I wanted to build a big mill, so um, card to that up here. Um, but yeah, basically I, I built the 3D printer because it was a cheaper option to, to build a printer before I went and spent all the money on the big parts for the mill. So basically, the printer itself, it would have cost me under $200 in parts. So that's the stepper drivers, lead screws, Raspberry Pi, the Arduino board, the ramps board, the piece that goes on the stepper motor. Um, but the rest of it, like the, oh, and also I had to purchase the bed as well, um, the heated bed. So all of those parts came off of AliExpress. If you've got any questions about the machine, um, or you want to see a bit more, in depth um, on the machine. Just leave a comment and subscribe to the channel.